coast and around the world. It's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. The tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. Prayer and Praise Gathering. Joining us from Trinity Christian City International are President of Samaritan's Purse, Franklin Graham. Founders of Cross and Crown Ministries, John and Tara Don Christensen. Ministry of Music, internationally known recording artist, Karen Wheaton. Visiting your calls, prayer partners around America. Shore to shore, border to border, and around the world, it is time to. I didn't hear you. Much better, thank you. See, we're live over the whole world now, so you have to shout a little louder. Okay, that doesn't make sense, does it? How are you, my dear? You're looking lovely tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, you and I have both been battling little bugs and flus and colds and couldn't talk, and but I'm I'm feeling wonderful. I guess uh, old age isn't for sissies, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? I think that was Walt Mills. Anyway, uh, so it does look like we're going to make it to Tonga and to yes, Samoa. I so I'm excited. And, uh, wow, Benny Hinn's going to be down there in Samoa. We're going to dedicate two stations, those wonderful areas. And I, I'm just so excited about world missions. You know why? I've just been sitting talking to Dr. Franklin Graham, and I tell you, he can just get you all excited. They are going around the world, every country, every little place, and I, I love it. I can't wait to everybody to hear it. He's the ground force, and we're the air force. Yeah. He's the Marines, and we're the whatever. Anyhow, in fact, Franklin, come on up here and let us say hello to you. Give him a big old we love you. Praise the Lord. Welcome tonight from Boone, North Carolina. How's my buddy? I'm doing great, Paul. Thank you. Wonderful. As I often say, if there's trouble anywhere in the world, Franklin's right in the middle of it. And he's bringing the love of God and the love of Christ. Uh, got any plans to go to China? We've got a little trouble over there, actually. No, I, I was just in the Sudan, though, Paul, uh, about two weeks ago. And uh, that's an area of the world where the church of Jesus Christ is being persecuted, where Christians are dying every day for their faith. And it's a place that needs a lot of prayer. Uh, our brothers and sisters, uh, you know, Paul, that is one of the few countries in the world where slavery mm -hmm. still exists. And here we are in the new millennium, and black Africans are still bought, sold, and traded in this nation and we need to pray for these people and I just hope and pray that this nation will will do something about it and you know a hundred oh what 50 years ago uh, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves in this nation and I hope that the United States and President Bush will stand up and just say you know this job is not finished yes, and yes. we're and, and as, as a nation we're gonna do everything we can to see that all men everywhere live in freedom Amen. You know, I, I heard a little report somewhere, somewhere that, that President Bush had picked up on some of your concerns and, and, and was doing something about that problem over in the Sudan. Well, I think uh, our country is uh, beginning to, to see this 
for what it is. In the last couple of, well, the last few years in Washington, there's been a lot of distractions uh, with uh, all the scandals, and no one had paid any attention to what mm -hmm. was happening to the church in the, in the Sudan. Uh, last year, Paul, we have a hospital, and it's the only really full-fledged hospital in, in the southern part of the country. It was bombed on seven separate occasions uh, by the Khartoum government. By the, but the government bombed it uh, seven different times, and uh, our people didn't run. They, they stayed. You know, we lost some of our staff, but when, when some left, more came. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, the hospital has, has not stopped one minute. Oh, Franklin, Franklin. Well, you know what? I, this, the Lord may have a little something in mind for us tonight. Um, it says, in fact, Jan, help our other wonderful friends up here, the Christiansons, John and Tara uh, Christiansen. It says amongst their other, many other uh, uh, curriculum vitae here <laughs> that he does ministry in the Sudan. Hello, former Congressman John Christiansen from Nebraska. How are you, sir? Good, good. We were back in Sudan, but we were in the northern part. Uh, most of the persecution that is occurring has been in the southern part, and where Louis, uh, Sudan is, where the hospital is there. But we had an opportunity to go into Khartoum, where the government officials are, and meet with them. So it was quite an um, uh, enlightenment for me to see the total disengagement of the Christians in Khartoum in the northern part. Well, maybe you two can share some strategy here before the night is over. And Tara Dawn, former Miss America. What year? 97. Yes. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh, how many children do you have? None yet. Oh, coming. <laughs> Incredible. How did you two meet? This is an announcement. <laughs> how did you two meet? This is well, one. I saw this gal walking down Ronald Reagan National Airport, and I said, wow. On what day? On Valentine's Day. Well, 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 well. And I said, who is that? And so later on on the flight, I stuck my arm out in the aisle and stopped her. And I said, it's Valentine's night. I don't have anything going on. Would you like to go out? And she said, yes. <laughs> Love at first sight, literally, huh? Well, I came home that night and said I was going to marry her, um, even though I found out later that she wasn't that enthralled with me that evening. So. <laughs> but I became enthralled later. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, good to have you all here. We'll have some good testimony from you in a little bit. A little word from the Word. Uh, oh, just before you do, okay. just before you do. Some folks called in and say, where have you been the last few days? Well, they really, they check up on me. I've been up in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Not gambling. Well, I put a nickel or two in the slot machine. <laughs> I heard Dr. Billy Graham say at the Reno Crusade years ago, there was nothing in the Bible about gambling being bad or wrong. Isn't that true? No. <laughs> uh, I've got it on tape. I was going to say, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> he just said there's nothing in the Bible no. oh. about it. Okay. About slot, about slot machines. Well, about, <laughs> well, maybe we better review that tape. <laughs> I was there for the National Association yes. of Broadcasters <laughs> Convention, and we cut a deal for a successor to G5, our big North American satellite that covers all of North America out to the Caribbean, down into Central America, clear up to Alaska, out to Hawaii. And you know what? They have changed the design back to the original design. I Somebody get a, get a close-up of this, Mr. Cameraman. Look, he looks like a little angel once more. The last one that went up looked like a big round barrel, but this one looks more like my little angel with a little head and two wings. And this will be angel number four. And Revelation talks about those angels in Revelation 14. And number four says, It's time to thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the world is ripe unto harvest. So, dear friends, the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You know what? I have some of the best news to announce, too. Satellite going around the world. We literally are now reaching around the world. And I had called... Uh, Franklin several weeks ago and had said to him, Franklin, wouldn't it be incredible if all of those fabulous sermons that your dad has preached over the years in all the big cities around the world, if TBN could just carry them and have them on and carry them. Every time we put anything on that he's on, a movie that he you know, is on preaching the gospel on the, on the movies that they produced, or 
an old thing on his birthday we did or something he did in Central Park. The ratings soar and the salvations pour in. So I told Frank on that. He told his dad that. And they have agreed to let us carry all of those incredible hey, crusades around the world now. They'll be going. Isn't that incredible? Thank you, Frank. And Paul, we, you know, we thank you for the, for the privilege of being able to, to use them because um, we have used these once, twice, but uh, many of these have been, been in, the, in the can, so to speak, on the shelf and haven't been used in years. And so we're thrilled that, that there's an outlet for them, that you all will use them because I believe 50 years from now, people will still come to faith. And if they're still showing films 100 years from now, uh, people will still come to faith. The reason is because the gospel is being preached and the, and, and the power of the gospel for salvation for everyone who believes. And so I believe that uh, this is a tool that uh, the Lord will use in a mighty way. So I just thank you all for w your willingness to use them. We thank you. Believe you know, me, watch in the month of May and you'll be seeing some of them. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have Billy Sunday on tapes? Uh, and, and John Wesley and some of the great old evangelists of bygone eras. Tapes of them? Do you have any idea? I don't even. No, but some of those were, they, they were before even wire recorders. You know, I mean, that was back 7,500 years ago and even Jonathan into the, Edwards. Jonathan Edwards. Well, that goes way, way back, you know. Read his sermon in Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Ooh, you'll get saved with your coattail on fire after that one. <laughs> Anyhow. Dr. Graham, he just might be watching tonight, might he? Back in, back in the home place. Thank you, sir. We love you. And by the way, I have written a very personal letter to Dr. Billy Graham. And you remember when we met backstage in at Nashville last summer, he just said to Jan and me, he said, you know, sometime when I come out to California, he said, I'd like to come and just sit down on the set for a couple hours and just talk. Don't want any a special agenda. Don't want any pressure. Just want to sit down and talk. So I said, Dr. Graham, please, anytime, anytime you tell us. I'll send the airplane to pick you up, <laughs> and uh, we'll fix a good dinner for you, and we'll just sit here and talk and do some reminiscing. And Like the Old Testament says, Hereby raise our Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Can you imagine the stories that could pour out of that great saint? It's, he's done it in a book, of course, hasn't he? The the uh, what's the biography? Uh, just as I am. Just, just as I am. Oh, it's fascinating. I I, I am reading it, and and I have read some of those awesome testimonies. I bless the holy name of God with all of my heart. Yes, I will bless the Lord, and I will not forget the glorious things that He does for me. He forgives all of my sins. He heals me. He ransoms me from hell. And He surrounds me with loving kindness and tender mercies. And He fills my life with good things. And my youth is renewed like the eagles. He gives justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his will and nature to Moses and the people of Israel. He is merciful and tender toward those who don't deserve it. He is slow to get angry and full of kindness and love. He never bears a grudge nor remains angry forever. He has not punished us as we deserve for all of our sins. For his mercy toward those who fear and honor him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. And he has removed our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. And he's like a father to us, tender, sympathetic to those who reverence him. For he knows that we are but dust. And that our days are few and brief, like grass, like flowers blown by the wind and then gone forever. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who reverence Him. And His salvation to the children's children. 
(laughs) of those who were faithful to his covenant and remember to obey him. The Lord has made the heavens his throne, and from there he rules over everything there is. Bless the Lord, you mighty angels of his who carry out his orders, listening for each of his commands. Yes, bless the Lord, you armies of his angels who serve him constantly. And let everything everywhere bless the Lord. And oh, how I bless him too. Amen. And everybody said, from the Living Bible, Psalm 103. Stand with me for just a moment, and let's just invite the precious Holy Spirit to come. Join hands with that neighbor, that little symbol that we are in agreement. Father, we give this night to you and ask that your precious Holy Spirit come and take complete control of everything we do or say or sing. Lord, we ask you above all else to let the convicting power of the Holy Spirit fall around this world. Lord, above all else, give us precious lost souls who will kneel at the foot of your cross and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. We ask you for these things in Jesus' precious name. Anoint everyone that speaks, everyone that sings, everyone that shares testimony. And we promise, we promise you will receive all praise and glory. For it is in Jesus' dear name that we ask. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. Well, greet your neighbor. Give him a smile, a handshake, or a hug. And uh, Karen Wheaton is here tonight. She's going to have a little song service for us here. Oh, yes, just go ahead and sit down, Franklin. And uh, then we're going to get down to some weightier matters of the law here in, in just a little bit. Karen, everybody ought to know. Boy, they may just do that tonight.
just before we get into some really neat stuff here with Franklin Graham, I've got one little, couple little prayer requests. And uh, I just got a letter today, honey, from uh, the People's Republic of China. And the delegation from the religion department is coming to see us probably in May or June. Uh, I have an invitation to meet the new ambassador in Washington, D.C. And uh, things are still moving afoot on our exchange of television programs in spite of the recent unfortunate <laughs> incidents from China. So please, please keep praying. We want Christian television. We won't rest. We will have Christian television in China in Jesus' name. And this was so sweet. I, I go through, I just love to go to the mailbox every day and see these coming from all over. This came from Turkey today, Franklin. This, this will bless you. It just starts out with the sinner's prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God, that you died for our sins, that you are buried and rose again, as is written in the Bible. I'm sorry for the things I've done that hurt you. Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Take charge of my life and make me the way you want me to be. With your ever-present help, I renounce all my sinful practices of the past. Cleanse my heart with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Hamala from Turkey. Is that cute? Oh. And then, Franklin, oh, dear, dear, look, look what we're getting from around the world. I believe that boy got saved. Got yeah, I, did. I, I did, listening to that. <laughs> if you prayed it with him, you, you're saved too. But these are the kinds of things we're getting now, Franklin, because we're literally live now in, in a great part of this world. And this is from Iran. He says, I write this letter from Iran. I am an, an Iranian and my religion is Islamic, Shiite. I've been so glad of finding your site and I hope you would help me for solving my problem that I'm going to deal for your consideration, he means. Mm -hmm. I want to change my religion to Christian, mm -hmm. but I don't know how I can do it. Please guide me, how can I change my religion? If you reply to this letter, I will detail my situation to you in the next letter. Mm. Thank you for helping in advance. Mm. And we never use names in that part of the world. It's just a young man reaching out for more of Jesus. Mm. Oh, dear friends, mm. how do we finally get our arms around the whole wide world? Well, I'll tell you one more little minute, and let me just show you this little response from Fiji. Now, before you roll it, director, we didn't even know about this one two weeks ago in Telethon. We didn't know. These are opportunities that just keep coming, 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 even after Telethon is over. Mm -hmm. So some of you, the lines are open and there are partners on the line call right now. If you missed out on that week of Telethon or if the Lord's speaking to your heart to help us with some of these new things that we didn't even know about, Please make a call right now. Let's go to the islands of Fiji, way down in the South Pacific, for this little report from some very excited Christians down there. And I'm really thankful to the Lord, too, and, and myself and my director, Joe, for sitting out there to be, you know, to be um, the part of the historical occasion that we could be here to issue the license, first license ever for radio and for TV. Uh, totally for the Christian for the for, for, for Christian programs, and I think uh, and uh, I think we are just vessels of the Lord that uh, has chosen us, picked us to be part of this ongoing plan by Almighty God. So I'm really thankful to the team that has come here today from all the way from Samoa, a brother from New Zealand, and the two pastors that are here yes. to be all part and parcel of the the historical, the historical occasion here today that we are able to issue the first ever license at the end of the 20th century for this country, Fiji, for the Christian community in this country. Yeah. By the authority of Jesus Christ, yes. the commander of God's yes. heavenly forces, we agree on this now as yes. the body of Christ, yes. now here assembled here and around the world. 
Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. And I thank you all for your roles and pastor in this uh, plan. <laughs> that gentleman that <coughs> you saw at the beginning there <coughs> was actually, uh, if I understand it correctly, their chairman of their FCC, and this was the first issuance of a license for a private Christian television station, and also they're putting in a radio station. We're going to put the TV station on. <clears throat> We're on our way to dedicate the one in Tonga, over to say hello to the ones in Samoa that have been on for a couple of years. So even the islands of the sea Amen. are receiving the Word of God tonight live. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. How can y'all be so calm out there? <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the world a love wave. What do you say? Tell them we love them. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to Chris. Chris, thank you. He just brought me a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Isn't that sweet? Oh, lovely. Thank you, Chris. God bless you. I just want to say thank you for that. That's of course. very special. Not even my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> He's early. <laughs> He's early. Franklin, son, where have you been? What have you been up to? I know you've been doing some good things somewhere. Well, we've been, uh, you know, Paul, just uh, so many areas of the world that need help. And, of course, uh, the Sudan has been very much on my heart and on my mind because of the, the genocide, Paul, and the persecution that the Church of Jesus Christ uh, is under today. Uh, the, as I mentioned earlier, this is one of the few countries in Africa or in the world where slavery is still permitted. And, you know, to think that here we are in the new millennium and people can be bought and sold and traded and you know, my, I'm just hoping and praying that our nation and that our president will stand up and say that as, this, as the head of this country, that we'll use our diplomatic power to try to end slavery. Amen. Uh, we'll Amen. use our eco economic power to do everything we can to end slavery. Good. And if need be, we will use our military power. Amen. Good. Yes. And uh, I hope... Good. Uh, what happened, you know, Paul, what happened to, to, in Bosnia to the Muslims, that was evil, that was wrong. What happened to the Kosovars, that was evil and wrong. Of course. And I believe that the United States going to save the Muslims was the right thing. I believe what's happening to the Christians in the Sudan is wrong. Absolutely. And, I, and there were 3,000 Kosovars that were killed, and we started the NATO campaign to, to free Kosovo. You've had two million black Africans in 15 years that have been slaughtered and, and, and the world has been silent. Mm -hmm. There has been a genocide that has taken place in this nation and the world has been silent. And, and now you have oil that has been discovered, talisman oil out of Calgary, Alberta, along with China is, is, is developing these oil fields, money's pouring into the Sudan and the Sudanese government is buying war material so that they can kill more of their own people. And it's, uh, it's wicked, it's evil, it's wrong. And I hope and pray that we'll do everything we can to help these people. Is there any thoughts that you could give us as something we can all do? Should we, should we write the president? Should we I, write I our congressman? I believe uh, write uh, our Secretary of State, uh, uh, Colin Powell Colin at Powell. the State Department. I also believe that uh, letters to the president and also to your, to your members of Congress and uh, to our members in the, in the Senate to, to, to let our representatives in the Senate know how we feel. Mm -hmm. I, listen, that, that, that has a lot of power, that has a lot of weight to, when you write those letters. Oh, yes. So, no question, I think uh, Colin Powell, and you know, I believe he's got a heart for, the, for, for this problem. He's a good man. He yeah. sure is. You know, Doug Weed, a good friend of mine that was on former President right. uh, Bush's staff in, in the White House said, told me something that shocked me. He said, when they got at least 12 calls or letters or emails or whatever into the White House on a particular subject, it went upstairs to the president. At least 12. Yeah. And I, I would have thought it would have been hundreds, maybe thousands before it would get the no, president's it's attention. Just a, it's a handful that can make a difference. Yes, sir. And many times we as Christians, we, we, we keep quiet thinking that nobody's paying any attention, no one's listening. And who cares about what I think? I tell you what, the, the, the government does care. And when you do write, and especially if they get 10, 15, if they get 100, or if they get 1,000 letters at the White House in the next couple of days, I guarantee you this will go upstairs. <laughs> 
And the main thing is to pray. Mm -hmm. You want to do something, you pray. You, you tell Almighty God and, and you, you pray for those believers in, in the Sudan and, and let God hear. Amen, amen. And I, and I believe that's what we need to do. The is heart pray. of the King is in the Lord's hand. Yes, sir. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, oh. Washington, D.C., <laughs> 2003 or something like George that. George W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, okay, yes. Okay, cool. And you can always, information can give you uh, your congressman's number and you can get that information. Now what would you say if you wrote to them, frankly? What would you say on a letter? So we'll give... my, 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 that uh, we are aware of the, the plight of the Christians in the southern Sudan and the, the slavery that is taking place and urging our government uh, to use all power available to end slavery and to free the Africans in the Sudan and to try to bring a peaceful resolution to this war. How about emails? And emails work, faxes, uh, letters, fax, calls. telephone calls work too. Very good. Yeah. And to Very end good. persecution of Christians. It's the, it's the persecution of the Church of Jesus Christ. But this is a war that's been going on for 15 years and the United States should get right in the middle and try to find a way to negotiate this thing. And let the Khartoum government know that we're not going to let you get by with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to have to free the slaves in your country. But listen, they want to sell their oil. We can blockade them. Sure. Uh, and, 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 and where they can't sell a, a, a quart of it. <laughs> uh, the, right now their bombers are flying freely over the southern part of the country bombing. They bombed our hospital seven times last year. <sighs> Mm -hmm. And uh, we can put a no-fly zone in just like we have in Iraq. Sure. We, we, can, we can keep their helicopters and their bombers grounded. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, there's a lot we can do as a nation uh, to, to force this government to, to the bargaining table. I really do. So, well, now, but we haven't done anything yet. You, you were there. You, Two weeks fact, ago. We're going we're gonna to play that little uh, uh, segment where you prayed at the inauguration. It was, we were so <laughs> proud of you. We were so proud of you. But wow. you obviously have had a chance to talk to George W. Bush, our president. On have you said anything to him On this particular it? issue, I talked to him uh, before the election. This was the Sunday uh, prior to the election on that Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned it to him and uh, he's, uh, no question, he's very, uh, I think he's very concerned. And I believe, uh, give him enough time, I believe uh, Sudan will certainly be one of the, the main points of interest for him in his foreign policy. And of course, uh, he's only been in for 100 days. And mm -hmm. the last uh, few weeks, we were talking about China, and, and I thought he handled that Very brilliantly. Well. And, Amen. Uh, Very well. So uh, I, we got to keep the Sudan on the front burner. Listen, we've never had a policy towards Africa. And, and I think this nation, the, the African-American community in this country, uh, as, a, as, a, as America, we should have a policy towards Africa. And we should have a policy to end slavery in Africa, anywhere else in the world. But, but for right now, let's target Africa. Let's free all slaves in Africa. What Abraham Lincoln started 140 years ago, I hope George W. Bush would stand up and say, the job isn't finished. And it's not going to be finished till all black Africans are free mm. everywhere in the world. So, well said. But here's something we need a policy uh, towards Africa. And we are the wealthiest nation in the world. We can, I, I would like to see us pre position relief supplies in Africa, helicopters and aircraft, so that when there's a flood in Mozambique, the United States can be the first nation on the scene with help. And if there is a famine in Ethiopia or somewhere else, the United States is the first on the scene to help. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we stockpile war material in Europe in case there's a war in Europe. We, we stockpile war material in the Middle East in case there's a war. Well, for goodness sake, why don't we stockpile food and medicine to save lives? Not to take lives, but to save lives. Amen. Boy. That's just too logical for... But if, we, but, if, but if we did this in Africa, it we would... We have it, one sitting over here, be quiet. But it would let the African people know, we can, Africa is important. It would let the African-American yes, community yes. know, Africa is important. Yes. Wow. And right now... Um, they ought to have some of those little precious mamas, those little wonderful mamas call. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over there? Yeah. You know, they know how to say it. <laughs> they yeah. can say it just right. <laughs> don't, don't get call. those mamas stirred up. I know. Up. Get the mamas <laughs> stirred up. <laughs>
call and talk well, to your president. Well, who knows? Maybe this can be a turning point tonight. I and think that so. If our I people will respond and, and... I hope so. You know, it's oh, the old adage, the rusty hinge gets the oil. Yeah. You know, well, and, and if we'll make these things known mm -hmm. and, and tell our president how we feel about this, and sometimes even people in top leadership positions, they're so busy with a billion other things, yeah. they, they don't even to... know sometimes yeah. these right. things they like they ought to. And, and I want to, you know, uh, for our, our Muslim friends, you know, that are watching, uh, when we talk about the Sudan, uh, I don't wish any evil on anybody. Of course not. And uh, we love uh, the Muslim people, and I want uh, to be friends. I want our nation to be friends with people of every nation. And like I said, what happened in Bosnia was evil. What's happening in the Sudan is evil. And, uh, and what's happened is they have the government has tried to force what they call Sharia law, Islamic law, on all the Christians in the South. And they're not going to bow their knee to Islam. Mm -hmm. no. And so they're fighting for their life. They're fighting for their survival. They're being massacred. They're being butchered. They're being enslaved. Uh, and, and, and no one has lifted a hand to help them. Mm -hmm. the, the guns that they fight back with are guns that they have captured from the enemy. And so they're, they're on their own. Very few people have, have raised a, a hand to help them. Mm -hmm. And many of these commanders, and I've met with some of these people in the, what they call the SPLA. This is the Grill Army. Uh, these men are preachers. They carry their Bibles when they go to battle. Mm -hmm. they, they get their troops and they read from the Scripture. They have a word of prayer and, and then they <laughs> fight for their families and fight for their lives. Uh, these are wonderful people. Uh, you know, it's, I've, I just uh, I want to you know, I just want the world to know what's happening and, and if the world would pray. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, writing those letters, Paul, boy, yeah. that, that'll make a big difference. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I yes. would too. Margie, my secretary, yes. <laughs> yeah. take note. Well, let's relive yeah. a couple of minutes of a very historic day. What was it? January the 20th? 20th, 20th. 20th. January the 20th. It's cold. Washington, yes, D.C. It was cold. very cold. Jan and I kind of... We kinda, were there. We, were, we had places there, but we kind of stayed in the hotel room and watched <laughs> y'all on the TV. We watched it, pretty it well. on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Franklin We went had, into a lot of the stuff. We oh, yeah. Went we went to of, the... We went to all the balls. We went to the to the ball of the Texas ball and went to several of those and got yes. to see him. And, but I Bumped into a lot of our wonderful TBN partners yeah. that, were, that were there. <laughs> But uh, Jake's was there with us. Jake's yeah. and Dion Sanders. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Franklin, as you all know, had the great honor of giving the invocation at the. Uh, was it the invocation or the invocation? It was the invocation yes, mm -hmm. of the uh, swearing-in ceremony for our new president, George W. Bush. Let's go relive that for just a moment. How fun! In his father's stead, the Reverend. Franklin Graham is with us today to lead the nation in prayer. Please stand for the invocation. Reverend Graham. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Yours, O God, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. As President Lincoln once said, we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power, as no other nation has ever grown, but we have forgotten God. It behooves us then to humble ourselves before the offended powers, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. O oh Lord, as we come together on this historic and solemn occasion to inaugurate once again a president and vice president, teach us afresh that power, wisdom, and salvation come only from your hand. We pray, O oh Lord, for President-elect George W. Bush and Vice President-elect Richard B. Cheney, to whom you have entrusted leadership of this nation at this moment in history. We pray that you will help them bring our country together 
so that we may rise above partisan politics and seek the larger vision of your will for our nation. Use them to bring reconciliation between the races, healing to political wounds, that we may truly become one nation under God. Give our new president and all who advise him calmness in the face of storms, encouragement in the face of frustration, and humility in the face of success. Give them the wisdom to know and to do what is right, and the courage to say no to all that is contrary to your statutes and holy law. Lord, we pray for their families and especially their wives, Laura Bush and Lynn Cheney, that they may sense your presence and know your love. Today we entrust to you, President and Senator Clinton, and Vice President and Mrs. Gore, lead them as they journey through new doors of opportunity to serve others. Now, O oh Lord, we dedicate this presidential inaugural ceremony to you. May this be the beginning of a new dawn for America as we humble ourselves before you and acknowledge you alone as our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh, boy. That was great, Franklin. You know, there's so many today that want to kind of soft pedal the, the J word. They don't want to say Jesus or Christ or it's kind of the higher powers and the man upstairs or something like that. Boy, I love it when you come right out with the Lord well, Jesus you know, Christ. I believe, Paul, I don't believe God gives you these opportunities. Hmm. Uh, and to, to not to lift up the name of His Son. Amen. I didn't ask to be on that platform. Uh, I believe God put me there. Sure. And it would be it would be a sin for me not to name the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, good, 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 good. Great moments in history. I, I, is there any way to describe the feeling standing between two presidents there on the? Several. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting, Paul. I, I believe God prepares us in life for for moments. I had been there four years earlier in that same chair with my father as he gave the prayer at President Clinton's inauguration, second inauguration. Mm -hmm. And my father was not feeling well that day. He asked if I would go with him just to help him to walk the stairs and to get up sure. out of the chairs. And those. So I had sat right beside him in that same chair where I sat on this inauguration. And so for me to be there, I'd just been there four years earlier, the same spot. So I knew what to expect. I mm -hmm. knew how the platform and how it, how it worked. Uh, or, I mean, I was familiar because I'd been there four years early. And I just realized, you know, when I was there four years early, I was there with my father because the Lord was preparing me for something four wow. years yes, sir. later wow. that I would be involved in. So, wow. you, th these don't happen by chance. Uh, God is in control, and God guides us, and He directs us. And I believe that when I get a chance to be on television, whether it's Larry King or, uh, or something like this, or the Columbine uh, mm -hmm. Memorial Service, whatever tragedy may, lift up the name of Christ, God's Son. That's the, that's what we need to do, is lift His name. Right. Yeah. Point, point men and women to the Savior. You can say all kind of nice words, but there's only one name under heaven yeah. by which we can be saved, and that's the name of Jesus Christ, God's Holy Son. And so I just believe when these opportunities come, lift up the name of the Son. Now, they will criticize you, yes. Oh, okay. And we got letters, and, and uh, you'd be surprised at people who would take exception. But, you know, don't invite me. <laughs> you know? Well said. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're going to invite a minister of the, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to mention the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So if that bothers you, don't ask me to come. <laughs> so, I believe you've made that clear. <laughs> uh, I love oh it. my! Hey, take us to Sudan. What's what you? Well, we've got given a, us a little tease, uh, uh, but uh, listen, I was up there two weeks ago. Um, I flew in. We we have two two planes we keep up there, Paul. And when you go in, we have to be very careful because um, enemy bombers had been over that airstrip just an hour before we landed. Um, they, they didn't bomb us, they, they just did a, they did a pass and kept on going. 
But if they see our planes, we're always afraid that they're going to bomb. So as soon as I landed, uh, another pilot got in the plane. He took, took off and, and got out of there. And we called for him when we were mm -hmm. ready for him to come back. But mm -hmm. uh, we've got the only hospital in the southern center. When I say a hospital, there are clinics. There are other places that they call hospitals. But we have three doctors up there. We have a full-fledged operating room. We have the medicines, good modern equipment. People come from 150, 200 miles away to this hospital. Mm -hmm. A little town called Louis in Mundry County. Uh, on the 29th of December was the last time we were bombed. Um, the bomb uh, missed one of uh, the wards, and there's a church there, and it landed in the back of the church and blew the back of the church out. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, um, the uh, bishop who I met up there, a godly fellow, he said, Fr he, he said, Mr. Graham, he said, when the bomb hit our church, he said, I sent a letter to, to all the churches in the southern Sudan to tell them that the, that the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ was still standing in Sudan. Oh. <laughs> and Glory. He told them not to worry. He said the true church was still standing. <laughs> oh, so I did a little report for you from the Sudan. Oh, we, we have suffered little for our faith oh, compared right. to these precious souls. Yeah. All right, let's go to the nation of Sudan, where Franklin files this report. One of the five bombs that landed close to the church, it blew a hole through the side of the church. You got a lot of kids in one place um, who used to be in the army and with guns. Uh, Jan Paul, uh, this is Franklin Graham. Right now I'm in Mundri uh, in the Sudan. And I want to take the next couple of minutes and I just want to share with you what uh, God is doing in this part of the world. I want you to see it for yourself. For more than 17 years, the war in Sudan has laid waste to the people and land of Africa's largest country. Long years of struggle and unbelievable suffering. Muslims or the Islam religion does not consider those who are not, uh, the fellow believers with them as equals. So according to their religion, the infidels, they call us so, they should be destroyed, their lands should be taken over from them. It continues for many reasons. Religion. The Northern Islamic government has declared jihad against the largely Christian South and economics. The oil field discoveries in Central and Southern Sudan represent incredible wealth. The North wants it and will do virtually anything to keep it for themselves. And people are made destitute, people have suffered enough. Um, their life has changed, they are demoralized, There's no system anymore. The war against the South has been a campaign of terror that has cost an estimated two million lives and created more than five million refugees. Since 1997, Samaritan's Purse has been operating a hospital in the South and has been providing health care to thousands in this region. You know, in three years' time, people were dying because of disease. But now, the, you know, the death rate is reduced. And that is really very important. Now there's a great change. People are healthy because there is a medicine. But the northern government continues to make our work difficult, bombing the hospital and peaceful villages nearby. One recent attack hit the church next to our hospital compound. The bomb exploded and knocked a huge hole into the wall. It went through, the concussion went inside and lifted the roof off, breaking a lot of the roof rafters, damaging a lot of the iron sheets that were there, blowing the glass out of the windows and just completely blowing up the inside of the building. Swan's Purse are still running the hospital. The hospital has uh, never closed even for a day despite all the bombing that's been going on and everything that's happening. Uh, Swan's Purse is also very involved in the church. They will be helping to rebuild the church, helping the community. They're not going to rebuild it for the community, but they're going to give the community what they need and stand beside them and work with them so that we can build the church together. We won't let it stay this way. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> About 200 kilometers to the north, Samaritan's Purse operates a health clinic designed to help ease the strain on the hospital. But recent developments there have created a new crisis to deal with. 
Uh, Jan, Paul, right now, uh, I'm in a cot. Uh, here is a place where 1,800 boys, who many of them have been in the military with the SPLA, they've been decommissioned by pressure from the United Nations, uh, the UN, got the kids, and then have dumped them here in the middle of nowhere. And Samaritan's Purse is uh, trying to help these kids. Why did he join the army? It's uh, that my father and my mother have been killed. Enemy soldiers came and some of us ran away. When I came back, I found my mother and father on the ground, dead. Many of them are orphans because of the war, uh, because of the, the tactics that are used by the government of Sudan. So for them to go home is not a straight, a straightforward thing. So is the camp, uh, it's back in here, it's right here? Well, it's all in all these buildings, you've got kids in these. Obviously, uh, the physical condition of these boys is something that needs to be addressed. And we are in the process now of establishing a new camp there, which will take 420 boys from this camp and uh, have them for the period that is necessary until their, their home areas can be traced and they can be returned to those places. One of the great opportunities we've had just in the, in the few weeks we've been trying to get started working here is that we've been able to show the Jesus film a number of times to these kids. And so that's another a real blessing that um, we've had the opportunity to do that. And we hope that that will begin to impact on the lives of these kids as they really hear the words of Jesus. But serious questions remain for Southern Sudan. Can the church continue to stand against the tyranny and persecution of a militant Muslim government? Is there any hope for the Christians in southern Sudan? Is time running out? Uh, Jan and Paul, as you can see, the need here is great, but a lot has happened, a lot is continuing to happen, and we certainly um, need your continued prayers and your help and your support. We want to thank you and all the folks for their support and for their prayers of this work here. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. God bless you. I'm Franklin Graham in the southern Sudan. Beautiful. Thank you, Franklin. Oh, my. That just tears your heart out to see the suffering that's going on with people down there. What, aside from you and me running some guns down there, what can we do? <laughs> I tell you, the, the greatest uh, arsenal that the Christian has, I mean, the greatest weapon we have in our arsenal as Christians is prayer. Of course. Of course. And uh, you want to fight the enemy, you want to fight Satan, then uh, we tell our Father in heaven. And uh, I believe it's important that we pray for these people, and not just to, to pray to tonight as we watch this program, but to, to write this down and put it on your refrigerator or mm -hmm. you know, put it inside your Bible. Uh, remember to pray for the Sudan and mm -hmm. pray for these suffering believers that uh, God will, will hear and that God will intervene and that God will stop this, this, this wicked, evil war. Yeah. Wow. And in addition to that, Franklin's address is on the screen. Mm -hmm. Many of you are going to want to help Franklin in this wonderful work he's doing. He won't ask, but I will. Thank you. And uh, many of you have taken Franklin and Samaritan's Purse on your heart, and we, we thank God for that. And the Graham Association, Franklin and his dear father and all of, have, have blessed us, by the way, with a wonderful gift mm -hmm. that we learned about tonight. And Jan, you yes. might elucidate I'll on that a little more. i it again. Not only have they blessed us with 12 of the films mm -hmm. that their organization produced over the years and some of them were several million dollars a piece. Tell, tell him what rating Oh, Corey I, I told him before. <laughs> uh, Corey Ten Boom, we just played that uh, during uh, Holy Week. The Hiding Place. And it place. drew a 57, which oh. is incredible that's rating. 5.7 million people. I just need people. to tell you, that's a you good You know, I watched rating. it. Did you? Did you I, watch I watched it on it. TV? I did. I did. <laughs> it, I did too. But they've <laughs> given us, they have, uh, so did I. I watched it on TV. But they have given us all of these movies, and mm. that is irreplaceable. Mm. I mean, that would be a, that's a $25 million mm. gift mm. or more to mm. TBN. But then, the gift that has no price mm. <laughs> is Dr. Billy Graham preaching mm. in his crusades mm. over the years. There is no price for mm. what getting those incredible tapes mm. of Dr. Billy Graham preaching his mm -hmm. heart out to thousands around the world. And you just watch in the month of May. If we can get them here by May, they'll be, we'll be playing them during the month of May. Well, That's I'll, a very special <laughs> month for all television stations is the month of May. Everyone needs to watch the whole month of May because that decides whether or not 
we get to stay on some cables right. and things if our ratings are high. Mm. But you know what? Ratings doesn't mean mm. anything to me. You know what it means? It means there are thousands of more people watching. Yeah. See, that's what ratings exactly. is. It means the <clears throat> world is watching. And that isn't Christians only. That is the world watching. So mm. when Dr. Graham's on, believe me, the world tunes in. Mm. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, we're going to, to get the them whole to organization. They should have been here several weeks ago, so I don't know what's happened, but I'm going to work on it tonight. You know, what? a thought just hit me. There are something like 3,000 theaters in the United States, right. okay? And we've been talking about how as we invade, we're, we're producing a big new film later this year called Automated. Megiddo, and it's the Battle of Armageddon, and <laughs> as I keep telling everybody, we're going to scare the hell out of everybody with this one and, and, and heaven into them. <laughs> But By the way, wait a minute. I have no, a, let, no, let me, I have let me a copy finish. For him. Oh, you do. Oh. I have a Megiddo copy. Oh, Matt yes. brought that down. It's a rough copy, but he wanted you just to view it and to tell, let him know what you think. I love it. And I mean, it's let war. your dad see that too. Right. We'd, we'd be interested yeah. in his thoughts. But the thought just hit me that 5.7 means 5.7 million, million people, mm -hmm. and that doesn't even count all the little stations out there right. that aren't in the survey. Okay. So there was easily five, some nearly six million people watching. Did you know that was like selling out every theater in the United mm -hmm. States? At if every night. theater, I did a quick in little calculation. Night. You know, most of these theaters seat 100, 150, right. 200. Mm -hmm. When you talk five and a half, six million people, That's right. we filled every theater in the United <laughs> States for the hiding place. Amen. Hey, Amen. that's a good deal, isn't it? Okay, one, one more subject here, and I, Franklin, I guess you've got to catch a plane or something. It's nearly 8 o'clock here, but uh, do we have time for Operation oh, Christmas yeah, Child? Absolutely. At least. Um, this is uh, Operation Shoebox again. Well, we call it uh, Operation Christmas Child, and last year we collected over 4 million shoeboxes, <laughs> went to over 80 different countries, <laughs> and, the, and the most beautiful part of this project is it's just a, it's a, a empty shoebox that people fill with gifts for a child, toys and whatever. And we distribute them, distribute them through churches around the world. And uh, we gives us a chance to tell them about the greatest gift of all, God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. What better gift at Christmas <laughs> than to give a gift to a child and tell them about the greatest gift of all. Okay, now, for those of you that haven't heard about this, you, you mean literally just a plain old shoebox? We box. an empty shoebox, and if you want to make it for a girl, put a doll in it. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about dolls. Every doll that I've seen a child get out of the box, the first thing they do is they hold it, oh, I know. kiss it. Hug it. If you want to give a box to a, a boy, put a truck. With wheels. With wheels. They want the wheels. Or put a soccer ball. <laughs> if you put a soccer ball in there, make sure you put the air pump in there yeah. because nothing's more frustrating than yeah, trying right. to blow up a soccer ball without a pump. Yeah. So uh, you can't do it. But make your box for, for a child. Put some pencils, some school paper, Hair bows. bows, combs, Combs. a mirror. I tell you what, sunglasses. <laughs> oh really? Kids they go sunglasses. nuts over cool. a little pair of sunglasses. Cool. They think they're, they're cool. I mean it's cool. great. Yeah. <laughs> but for many of these kids this is the only gift they'll ever get in their life. It's the only benevolent mm. act that they've ever received. Mm. So if we can do this and do it through the churches, I mean, for me to give four million anything away, I mean, that's a, that's a big project. It, we have to have the help of the churches around the world. So mm -hmm. what we do is we give the, the, the gifts to the, to the churches. We, we outline a program for them, and they put on a little skit, and it, it's, it's wonderful. And they have used this as a tool for evangelism. And, and listen, the churches around the world are under attack. And the Church of Jesus Christ around the world is, is suffering, as we saw in the Sudan. Mm -hmm. And this gives the pastor in these areas an mm -hmm. edge. Mm -hmm. It gives mm -hmm. them a tool yeah. that uh, others don't have. And when they can invite kids to come into the church and to hear a program about Jesus Christ and to receive a gift, I tell you what, it, it's, <laughs> it's a powerful tool. You bet. What a tool of evangelism. <laughs> well, let's take a little look at uh, Operation Christmas Child, and then we'll give you instruction on what you can do. <laughs> Uh, 
I think when you give a shoebox to a child, regardless, uh, you bring a little bit of joy, a little bit of hope uh, into their life. It's kids helping kids. Children reaching out to children. Families reaching out to families. Just giving, that's what it's about. Giving in the name of Jesus Christ. Shoeboxes! Thank you! He's provided a way for us to be with him in heaven. Que él ha provisto una manera de estar con él en el cielo. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hello, oh, my goodness. You've, you've, you've touched a heartstring in Jan. She loves to go around the world giving those dolls out, but this is a seasonal thing. Four million last year. Four million, and uh, this year uh, our goal is five. <laughs> And uh, I want to reach, this has been, this is something we've been working on now for eight years, nine years. And I want to get it, our goal is ultimately to go 10 million children a year that we can give a gift to. And do it through the churches around the world. 80 nations last year, and we're just each year trying to get it a little bigger and uh, get a little better at the evangelism. Because that's the most important part. If we can use this as a tool to win children to Jesus Christ, I believe God will bless it. He will give us. Amen what it takes to make it happen. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big operation, uh, four million. Uh, that's, that's a tough, tough I'm so deal. glad the Lord called you to do this. Uh. No, I'm, listen, we've got a great staff, a good team of people, and yeah. it's not me. Oh, uh, I, I can't know, do it. It's, 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 the, it's the Church of Jesus Christ around the world. It's a dedicated staff back in Boone, North Carolina. We have an office in Calgary, Alberta, and, and also in London and Australia. And, and I tell you, they're great people that work behind the scenes that, that make it happen. Uh, Tomorrow, I have a board meeting out here. Mm -hmm. I've got some of my board members here. And, in, the, uh, in this audience? In yeah. the audience. Oh, and yeah. uh, some of them are kind of, uh, these are little, good guys, I tell you. Bashful. They go with me, yeah. oh. different parts of the world. Uh, and I've got uh, Dennis yeah, Agajanian back yeah, yeah. here. Have him stand up. Dennis, stand up. Stand up, Dennis. Uh, <laughs> Dennis plays in all of my crusades. Yeah. I've been with me for 20 years. I've got Dr. Mel Cheatham, a neurosurgeon from Ventura. Mel, stand for a second. Um, one of the great neurosurgeons. Uh, Skip hides it. Uh, Skip is from Calvary Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, Skip, stand. He's this guy. 
Uh, he likes to ride Harley Davidson. Good guy. <laughs> We got a fellow back here. His name's Felix. We call him Catman. Uh, yeah, Felix Cat Martin Del Campo. He's a dentist from uh, from uh, Visalia, one of the best dentists in the United States. Stand up. <laughs> and next to Felix is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Billy Batstone. And Billy has is some has authored some of the great hymns of today, what wow. we call praise songs, uh, out of Chuck Smith's church originally. But really? Billy, ba Billy, I want you and your wife to stand. You're back there somewhere. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, that's great. So, Wonderful. So these are some of, some of the guys that uh, are part of my work and my ministry. They go into places like Sudan with you. And Dennis is leaving uh, this weekend for India and he's going up into the, the hills of northern India with you. a team of pastors and they're going to be, this is for the Billy Graham Association, he's going to be up there for the next 10 days in northern India. So it's a tough area, it's the, the tribal area, really, really hard to get to. Yeah. Tell you what, I give the commission to you. Who's going to India? Dennis Agajanian. Dennis, bring, bring me a report back. We're in over 1400 stations in India. Yeah, sure so will. let me know if they're watching us out there, okay? Yeah, sure will. Thank you. Where did you see us the other night? I was in uh, Nairobi. He was in Nairobi. And, and, and you all were on, on television. On This is one of the main stations. Uh, well, they only have four or five. I don't yeah, know what they got. Two or three. There, yeah. I was, you know, you're flipping through the three channels and there you were. Yeah. <laughs> that that is our station. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, it's, it's their station, Nairobi. yes. Oh, yeah. We had a wow. great meeting last year there with Benny Hinn yeah. and just so many wonderful things happen now. On and on. The mm. over. 2,421 stations Amen. on the air Amen. worldwide. Amen. So God be the glory. Amen. Well, Franklin, we'd keep you here all night if, if, if you've got to get on your way. Next, why, uh, oh, we got one more. We got right, one more. Well, we got the El Salvador. Yeah, can, can, can you stay a few more minutes? Where are you going next? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I've got children graduating from school this next month, so I'm trying to stay home. I've got a son going to graduate from college. I've got a son going to graduate from uh, seminary, and then he's going on for his doctorate degree. Wow. So he, he's going to be the only Graham to have an earned doctorate degree. So. <laughs> How about that? And tell us the other news. Oh, I'm, Come on. I'm now a grandfather. You are a grandpa. I'm a grandfather. <laughs> ah, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Boy or girl? My oldest son, his wife, and a girl. So this now is our first girl. grandchild. So we're well, congratulations. grandparents. Oh, That's lest exactly. I forget, though, now back to shoebox ministry for a minute. If somebody wants to help, just a simple shoebox, the things you indicated, the gifts for a boy, gifts make it either for a boy or a girl. Right. And, and what we would like is then, um, if they would like to be involved this year uh, to get their church involved and if they would write to our office, we'll send them a kit for the church, how to, to promote oh. this in their Sunday schools and so forth. So mm -hmm. we'd like to have everybody to, to help, but we'd like to get the churches and the Sunday schools involved because if you get churches and behind it, and the church is praying, mm -hmm. and the people praying, then this, you know, it just gets better. Yes. As long as you <laughs> got people praying, backing in prayer. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> okay, and send your letter or your shoe box to that address? Yes, box sir. Three, three Post thousand? Office Box 3000 T. Uh, T, Tango T, mm -hmm. Boone, North Carolina, 28607. Wonderful. <laughs> You got to tell me that one real quick. That little story about the dear old lady back in Tennessee, I think, or was it Kentucky? Yes, Mary Dameron. Mary Dameron, who heard uh, us a year, a few she, years she, ago. She watched <laughs> this program and heard me talk about uh, the, the the shoebox she, project, and she collected on her own about three thousand shoeboxes, <laughs> and the and the day after Thanksgiving, which is a Friday, showed up at our office. With a, with a big, like a tractor trailer truck full of these shoe boxes and the office is closed, but we have somebody at the switchboard and they called my house and I live about a mile away and they said, uh, Mr. Graham, there's a lady from West Virginia, she's brought you some shoe boxes. I said, well, just have them, put them there in the foyer. She said, well, she's got a, a tractor trailer. Uh, I said, oh my, I said, well, and everybody was gone. So I said, well, I'll come down there. And I met this lady and she had a, cigarette dangling out of her mouth. <laughs> she said, Brother Graham, she said, I've got you some shoe boxes. For, and she said, for God. Mm. And I said, well, great. Well, thank you. Uh, she said, I got you 3,000 of them. 
I said, well, oh my. I said, well, we better put them in the warehouse. So we have a warehouse in the back, and we drove back there. And as we're unloading them, I asked her how she heard about this project, watching you folks there in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. But this lady, Mary Dameron, has traveled around the world for me. She's been to the White House. She presented it to, to President Clinton when he was uh, in the White House. Um, and he, he called me into the Oval Office after he met with her. And he said, uh, this, this lady, Mary Dameron, he said, where'd you find her? I said, uh, Mr. President, I said, you know, I didn't find her, she found me. He said, I want you to know she's some kind of woman. <laughs> um, but here's a, a, a lady who made an impact on him. And yes. I was with him a few months later. He said, how's Mary? Oh, my. I was with him a year later. He said, how's Mary? He said, that lady from West Virginia, Mary Dameron, knew her oh, name. How's she doing? Well, now that was President Clinton. That was Clinton, yes. Wow. Interesting. But she's doing well. She's, uh, she's a, uh, oh, he asked me, he said, is she on your payroll? I said, no, sir, she's not. He said, she should be. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, yes, sir, Mr. <laughs> you Rutt. So, you better get her out here sometime on a sure. Praise oh, the Lord program. Let me tell you, she's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and she is full of stories, and she is a great woman of God. She is a great, uh, she's a woman of prayer. Wonderful. She, she, she would be smoke? one of the greatest guests you've ever had. You know, ask her. I really don't care. Franklin used to smoke. No, I mean, you know. Listen, I've smoked for years. And, uh, but no, she's, she's a great, uh, great woman of prayer. And God has used Mary Dameron with uh, Operation Christmas Child. Wow. She, has, she has collected tens of thousands of boxes herself. Oh, and every year she oh. goes to a different part of the world to help us deliver these boxes. That's fun. So she's a, this is a lot God. of fun. That's great. <laughs> well, let's take a little ride down to El Salvador, a country very near to my heart. It was That's our right. very yeah. first station. I went down there back in the days of Napoleon Duarte, uh, the president. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Napoleon Duarte. 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 Mm -hmm. And then uh, President Cristiani helped mm -hmm. us dedicate the new station. Yeah. We went down there when the Civil War was on. Yes, sir. And went through a few little yes, close calls ourselves, but we prevailed and the Lord gave us a full power TV station in uh, San Salvador, El Salvador, and now three other stations that literally cover the nation. You were there when, Franklin? Oh, I've been there twice since Christmas, so uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're <coughs> rebuilding houses. As a result of the the earthquakes, yeah. uh, I, when I was there, I was in, had an, we were in earthquakes. So, but there's a great need Why, for help. There? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, it, uh, you felt it. Oh yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, that ground shakes down there. Oh jeez. Uh, and unfortunately, people the the <coughs> homes there are made out of adobe brick. Mm -hmm. The city of uh, the capital is reinforced concrete. It's steel, and it, the ground shakes. Buildings will crack, but. They don't fall, but you get out into the rural areas. Everything's made out of adobe brick, and when the ground shakes, it just crumbles and falls yeah. apart. <clears throat> no, yes. Did it hurt our station, I mean? No, it, we were really? off the air a little okay. while, but uh, wow. we we built it right, and it's. We've got a big station there. But about uh, eighty percent of the countryside is destroyed. Oh my! Eighty percent. Yes, sir. It's 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 unbelievable the devastation. Oh. Wow. Let's, let's go. Here. Let's have a look at El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Earthquakes that ripped through El Salvador took many lives. Families have been torn apart. Homes and property are devastated. A feeling of helplessness is widespread amongst the survivors. Despite the adversity and turmoil created by the quake, there is hope. Samaritan's Purse, the Christian relief organization led by Franklin Graham, the son of evangelist Billy Graham, is dedicated to restoring more than just the basic physical needs of hurting El Salvadorans. Samaritan's Purse's ultimate mission is to guide earthquake victims to the hope that is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jan Paul, uh, this is Franklin Graham. Right now, I'm in uh, El Salvador, right outside the capital city. Uh, a few weeks ago, as you know, a tremendous earthquake shook this part of the world. Hundreds of thousands of homes were leveled. Samaritan's Purse is uh, in the country. But I'd like to take the next couple of minutes and just share with you what God is doing in this part of the world and how you can be a part of helping these people in their hour of need. There's some walls standing, but uh, just about everything on the streets, uh, I mean, these houses are completely damaged just uh, right here. Uh, it's. Uh, 
Here's a home. And you look back down here, every house, every wall, cracked, it's fallen. There's no way you can live in it. It's just, it's just not safe. What impressed me uh, most about uh, El Salvador, the people work. They're not waiting for a handout. These people are, are busy trying to, to rebuild. Uh, the poor are, are going to rebuild and go right back into these mud brick uh, homes because uh, that's all they have to work with. But I was impressed with uh, how dedicated the people were uh, and how willing they were uh, to get up and get moving and try to get their life back together. The biggest problem is for temporary shelter. Uh, where do you live? Uh, what we're doing is we're providing a temporary shelter, and this temporary shelter is made out of a corrugated tin roof, a steel frame, and then we use reinforced plastic for the sides. You know what's nice about this? The ground can shake all you want, and it's not going to fall down. This family was living inside this little lean-to, like a pup tent made out of plastic and these little sticks. This is where this family was living uh, up to today, this morning. And now you can see right over here is the brand new uh, structure that they're living in. It takes just about two hours to build one of those temporary structures, but it's, it's like night and day the difference. Well, one of the, the great needs anywhere in the third world is for clean water. And uh, Samaritan's Purse has a water filtration system, and it's a great way to provide clean water. Well, what's so unique about this right here is you're putting in, in really contaminated water, dirty water. And look, within just uh, seconds, you, you have clean drinking water. The biggest killer in, in third world settings like this, it's water. Water will kill you. And for us to be able to give a family clean water, the children don't get sick, the parents don't get sick. The quality of life comes up extremely high when you give someone uh, clean water. And of course, for us, what an opportunity for the evangelists to come and talk about the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just a great springboard. Temporary shelters and water filtration systems are only a part of Samaritan's Purse's plan for the area. Bibles have been distributed. Food buckets containing cooking supplies, along with essential medications and hygiene packs, have been placed into the hands of those most in need. Uh, is that her house back there, too? Yeah, I, uh -huh. I This elderly lady that uh, we came across, she was, um, she was really what I would say at, uh, at the end of uh, the rope. She was really in despair. As I passed by her house, she asked me, would you help? And I don't think you, you come across people like that uh, and pass them by. Our, our Lord certainly didn't pass people by. Her and her husband were too old to work, and there was no way they could clear off their lot. There was no way they could rebuild their house. And so this lady, we want to rebuild her home. But it's others like her in the country that we will help uh, get established back in a permanent structure. Within a few short days, Samaritan's Purse organized the clearing of rubble from Angela Rodriguez's home site. We're shoveling dirt for Jesus. Work teams armed with shovels and heavy equipment were used to remove the debris. Later, a temporary shelter was erected on the site until a more permanent home can be built. I am thankful you all are here. Thanks be to God. Anytime you help anybody, regardless of what the, it could be an earthquake, a war, a famine, whatever, but when you help somebody, they're going to listen to what you have to say. It's our intent working with the national churches there. Uh, to try to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person so that they might become believers. This is what God has called us to, and we see the hope, we see the opportunities that we have as Christians to, to reach out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and help people in their hour of need. I hope you remember to pray for the people and uh, lift the churches up in this area in prayer. They need, uh, they need our support. God bless you. This is Franklin Graham for Trinity Broadcasting in Central America in El Salvador. Oh, that was fantastic, brother. We're going to do more to help you down there. And some of you, we sent some aid down there to help in sure the earthquake did. through the TV station, but you're doing so much more, and we thank and we honor you for, you, for that. You know, where is that scripture? It says, Then I, the king, shall say to those at my right, Come, blessed of my Father, into the kingdom prepared for you from the founding of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. And I was thirsty, and you gave me water. And I was a stranger, 
and you invited me into your home. Mm -hmm. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick and in prison, and you visited me. Mm -hmm. Then those righteous ones will reply, then, Sir, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you anything to drink? Or a stranger and help you? Or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And I, the king, will tell them, when you did it to these, my brethren, you were doing it to me. <laughs> so you did that all for Jesus. Yes. I love that scripture. Hello. One more time, put Franklin's address. Some of you are going to want to become partners with this wonderful ministry that's going around the world. I still say, you're the... The Marines and or the Air Force, so we'll, we'll back Paul, you so, up as you go. Well, so much of the work that we've been able to do around the world has been because you and Jan uh, have supported us all these years. You showed me that you're celebrating your 28th year, mm -hmm. and it was about 23, 24 years ago I came on the first time on your program, mm -hmm. and you've had me back every year, and you have allowed uh, your program to be uh, a, a stage to talk about the needs of others. And I just Amen. thank you for all you've done for us. Over and years. I and became a partner with you that many right. years ago. You sure love have. It. Great. So all of those things being done, I'm a part of it. Amen. <laughs> and many of you are too. You Franklin, sure. bless you, my son. Thank you. Go so so with you, keep you safe. Is our daily, daily prayer. Karen, come sing us another beautiful song. And what a beautiful one this is. Holy Spirit, touch through me. Say my hands 
Thank you, dear. That's my song. Oh, my. We have the joy of meeting some new friends tonight on Praise the Lord from Omaha, Nebraska. The ministry is called Cross and Crown Ministries. Um, let's start with uh, the beautiful one first. <laughs> Tara. She was Miss America in 1997, also a recording artist and her husband, John, president of Quantum Trust Company, and also a former United States Congressman from Nebraska. Let's welcome the Christensen's to the Praise the Lord program tonight. How are you? Good. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. There really was no competition the year you ran, was there? <laughs> You are incredibly I beautiful. I totally agree with you. Isn't <laughs> she <laughs> You are just, you're breathtaking. Oh, beautiful. well, thank you. Wow. I appreciate that. The ladies there were absolutely incredible, and it was completely a God thing. Can you describe wow. the butterflies wow. as that song, you know, there she is, <laughs> Miss? <laughs> I can't describe butterflies. What I can describe is the peace that passes all understanding. Wow. Wonderful. Um, you were calm then. Yeah, I was very calm. Wow. I was very calm. I remember every moment of it. And that is not the way that I had understood that other Miss Americas had experienced it. Um, most Miss Americas, from my understanding, is they don't have a clue what happened. You know, they don't remember walking the runway. <laughs> they, they don't remember being crowned. But no. my process of becoming Miss America was a very long one. I started when I was 17 years old to compete in the program. I'd never competed in pageants before. And I just really, at that point, I was attracted to the, the crown, the glitz of it all. Sure. And then I started to realize, wow, God could use this. Yes. Even yes. God could use even the secular fake crown. Sorry, guys, it's not real. <laughs> um, and he can take that and give you a voice that, that you can't have through any other venue. Mm -hmm. And so I took a few years off from competing, got my undergraduate degree, and went back. And I just knew this was my year. And I came in fourth runner-up at the state level which was not exactly what I had planned. So I went back the next year, came in first runner-up. So four tries in the course of seven <laughs> years, and God gave me the desires of my heart. And uh, he knew that I wasn't ready yet. Mm -hmm. So I, at that point, by the time that I got there, I really had peace. Wow. Now, as you say, this opens many doors it for does. you. Can you think of an experience or two that where this honor that was bestowed upon you gave you an entree or a chance to witness. I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> you know, um, I, I really believe that just about everything that I have been doing for the last four years since receiving the title of Miss America has been because of that title. Um, as Miss America, I traveled 20,000 miles a month. Mm. I was in a different state every 18 to 36 hours. And the issue that I spoke about, every contestant has something that is their community service issue. And mine was literacy. And mine was literacy for a couple of reasons. One is I can't imagine not being able to read. That must be absolutely 
a terrible thing to live with. And there are people that I've talked to who will admit that they have been a murderer. They'll admit that they'll ha have done, uh, have stolen something or lied, but they won't admit that they can't read. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that has been a, a big secret in our culture, and it's just starting to get more and more recognition as being a serious issue because 22% of American adults can't read and write. You can maybe help some of our staff here tonight. They can't spell very well. Twenty-two percent. Twenty-two percent in America. Have they graduated high school? And Many of them have. One out of ten who receive their high school diploma cannot read the high school diploma. Hmm. Oh my! Goodness. And what that means to me as a believer is, they can't read God's word. It's it. They can't do what you just did, Jan. Yeah. That's they it. can't experience the fullness of knowing Christ. Hmm. They can hear yeah. what's told to them. They can't verify it in the scriptures, and they can't learn more. So what are you doing to help that, honey? Well, we are international spokespeople for Wycliffe Bible Translators. Oh, incredible. Uh, a lot of the viewers might know it as Wycliffe. That's mm -hmm. what I always said, but uh, Wycliffe, Wycliffe, it's the same organization. And we are able to travel the country and do our concert ministry as well as tell people about literacy and the importance of getting involved around the world. Because Wycliffe goes into language groups that don't even have a written language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So reading is not even an option. They create a written language and then begin to translate the scriptures and teach people how to read their own language. Mm. It's just so exciting. But you didn't put your finger on some of those little backstage or around the corner or off beaten path little experiences that this honor put you in the place to become that witness. <laughs> Did, is there any little memories that stand out in your mind? That particularly came out of being Miss America? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, your travels as Miss America, yes. Well, there, of course, the opportunity to get out the message about literacy and the importance of that. Um, I've been able to share my faith in places that I never would, able, would have been able to share my okay, faith. Um, I had the incredible honor this year to sing at the inaugural ball, the, the largest inaugural ball, which was just a dream come true that probably would not have occurred. What, were it not for the title? Was that the Texas Which one ball? was it? That was um, the Armory Ball. Oh, yeah. There were 14 states. Yeah, okay. you went there, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I was yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So that was something that never would have happened otherwise. Um, I met my husband because I was Miss wow. America. So, <laughs> and um, he has just opened up so many doors through that venue. I go into schools and talk about abstinence. I teach Jesus' principles without using Jesus' name in the public school system. Oh, I'll let it they slip once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, my conviction on that is that, you know, if I, if I go in and, and, um, and go past their rules and regulations, mm -hmm. then I'm going to mess it up for anybody else. Mm -hmm. And what I'm able to do many times is to go in and, and tell them about abstaining from drugs, alcohol, and premarital sex, and then say, and come join us for a rally tonight. Cool. It's free, cool. you know, free mm -hmm, food. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's where we tell them, you can't say no to these things very easily without the power of Jesus Christ. You know what mm -hmm. happened in South Dude. Dallas, Texas, when uh, it was Dave Reaver and uh, mm -hmm. some of the guys went in down there and the principal came to him privately and he said, listen, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. Yeah. You get out there and you lead them to Jesus. We got so much trouble in the school, that's the only hope we've got. I've it's had just, that said to me. It, yeah. it all comes back to the principal and their school board. Yeah. And, yeah. Cool. and I've had a lot of principals say that as well. Tara was just in a school down in Kansas, and uh, the principal said that to her. And that was an amazing situation because in this little county in Kansas, the uh, girls, I think there was a 20% increase in pregnancies in this little rural county. Mm -hmm. And Tara heard some stories from the seventh and eighth graders. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And so it is a ministry that is so needed out there in both the public schools and the private schools and even the Christian schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Amen. they'll let me into those schools because of this fake crown that I have at my house. You know, <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't say, yeah, come in, contemporary Christian recording artist, speaker. No. They, they might not mm -hmm. let me come mm -hmm. in because mm -hmm. I'm too Christian. Mm -hmm. But because I've had this title in the secular world, they'll open the door. And it's, you know, you can't replace that. Well, Paul, Paul says, I have to tell you, you know, even recently, she's even allowed me to get up and speak about this. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's been quite a situation because I have the story of everything you shouldn't have done. <laughs> and she has the story of 
what to do in terms of maintaining purity until marriage. Mm. And she was able to walk down that aisle as a 26-year-old virgin. Mm. And that is something that the best gift any bride or any groom can give each other. Amen. And I didn't have that to offer her. And so I'm able to tell these young people, don't do what I did. Okay. Listen to Tara. You got both sides of the coin. It is. It works couple. out well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how did you become a, ladies a, a first congressman then? Well, 1990. Were you before you met her? Yes, mm -hmm. ah. 1993. I was um, in Omaha, Nebraska, and just did not feel like the country was headed in the direction that I felt it should be headed. And mm -hmm. I started knocking on doors and raising money, and by golly, I snuck in a victory with 1,600 votes and became the congressman from Omaha. Okay. So for wow. four years and then... But, but now it says you refer to yourself as a recovering congressman. <laughs> please, please tell me what that means. <laughs> well, you know, Paul, they, they say that the opposite of, of uh, progress is Congress. And <laughs> <laughs> so um, God has a greater calling for me outside of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And that's... Uh, Are you sure? At least for right now. <laughs> at least for right now. Yeah, yeah I hear It's been, that. An, been incredible. You know, let me tell you just a little parenthetic. Paul has an aunt. <laughs> that lived in Nebraska, lived to be a hundred and six. Wow! So y'all eat something right, the weather's right, the dress, something's right. She lived to be a hundred and six. Aunt Till, she Aunt lived Till. in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we Hardy have. people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. We um, about a couple of years ago, we started this ministry called Cross and Crown Ministries, and it is really an outgrowth of both Tara's love and my desires and what we work in, and it's up, you know, building up the church and believers and also working in the areas of religious persecution. And so it's been mm -hmm. kind of fun to see where God has taken us over these last couple of years. And uh, listening to Franklin talk about Sudan is mm -hmm. everything is exactly right. What he says is absolutely 100% true. Let, let's touch on that in just a second here. You, you've got what? Some up yes. fresh news. Yes. Matter right of fact, I today. just um, yesterday got an email from a lady that I met when I was in uh, Sudan. I was in the northern part. And the reason I went to Khartoum first was because once you are in the south, they will not let you in the north. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And oh. so we went to the north first. And in our ministry, I'm, because of my past work in government, I'm able to get in and talk to the government officials. Mm -hmm. And we went in and talked with uh, President uh, El Tarabi, who used to be the president, who's now behind bars. And <laughs> he's absolutely a madman. And um, I got this email just yesterday, but the church in uh, Khartoum that we worshiped at when we were there, uh, the church, the All Saints, I believe we have a picture of it um, on, the, uh, on the camera. All Saints Cathedral in Khartoum was just bombed on Easter. And uh, one of the individuals uh, lost a hand and there were 57 people imprisoned. And it was uh, Reinhard Bonnke was supposed to be preaching and they would not let him preach. And then they rushed everybody out of the church and um, it's been absolute persecution even in the north for Christians. Um, Sometimes you can work it through diplomatic measures to bring people around to sound reasoning. The folks in Khartoum, I don't believe, can be reasoned with diplomatically. Mm. And uh, what Franklin was saying in the South is absolutely true. You heard Franklin's remarks mm -hmm. a little earlier. What can govern our government do? Well, there are a number of things we can do. Um, one of the issues is the food. Uh, we are allowing our government food through USAID to be used as a weapon against Christians. Um, in another one of our pictures, about two or three down here, we've got a picture showing a USAID um, bag of food that's an actually a encampment that's only being given if you're Muslim. If you're a Muslim, you can have the food. If you're a Christian, you do not get use of the food. Right here is the picture. Matter of fact, look at that. And it's a USAID, and you can see it's our government taxpayer dollars being used and we were there in this displacement camp, and the Christians did not get access to this food, but the Muslims did. And it was the most amazing thing because... Does George W. Bush know this? Well, we, we believe he does, and I believe he's going to do something about it. He's been... You uh, are a Republican, aren't I you? I am a Republican. Thank God. Yes. yes. <clears throat> anyway, you can get through to him. Yes. And with Franklin Graham and you and some of us working together, we can get through. That... That shocks that, that me. That shocks literally me. shocks me to my we core. Were, we were there and we saw it. 
You know what? I don't know why good Muslim people, if you know some of them, they're wonderful people. They're giving generally, and, and I don't know why they are not rising up mm. and saying, stop it. You know, don't do this. It isn't the, there's right. A radical fringe there's a radical fringe in every and area of our society. Good people but too. She's right. Some of the yeah. some of those oh. Arab people are the most hospitable people yeah. in the world, but and they'll just got they'll give you the shirt too. off their back. Jan, I have to tell you about yeah. one individual I met. Yeah. His name was Luel. Yeah. He was a Dinka man, and yeah. he was the bellman at our hotel where we were staying in Khartoum. What's a Dinka man? He is of the Dinka tribe. The Dinka, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, absolutely beautiful man. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous smile. Mm -hmm. Generous heart. And he said, John, let the world know. Mm. Tell our story. Yeah. When you go back to America, let the world know that there is slavery going on, mm. that mm. there is genocide going on, mm. that there is blood for oil occurring. Mm -hmm. mm. Let the world know. And what Franklin talked about in terms of getting involved, prayer, writing your congressman, writing your senator, calling the White House, these things all make a major difference. Amen. And if 10 now or 12 you people... you as a congressman, oh, if you got 10 letters about something... Absolutely. Got your attention. Absolutely. It's the most amazing thing if people will just <clears throat> write a letter, make a phone call, get on their knees, mm -hmm. and pray. Oh, the Sudanese people will feel the effects. Wow. How oh, can we all get in touch with Cross and Crown Ministries? Do you have an address? Yes. yes. As a matter of fact... Um, we have a website, and uh, the website and the address is right there, P.O. Box 540-621 in Omaha, Nebraska, and www.teradon.net. And on the website, all of the information about your ministry yes. would be available. Yes. Sure. Wow. What, what do you do? What, do you go and speak? Do you on a regular basis about this now? Or? We are often in tandem where she'll do a concert uh -huh. at a church and I'll preach in the morning. Maybe I'll share with the Sunday school about religious persecution and we'll work together and at the concert that night I'll end up helping on the sound and working on the all the you know behind the scenes because trust me you don't want to hear me sing so <laughs> <laughs> we leave that to so, her. Have message and song and we'll travel. We'll That's right. That's okay. we, we also do the abstinence message and women's ministries and men's wonderful, ministries wonderful. And, and the literacy aspect. Well, too. I know you'll get a lot great. of inquiries and calls from us. You know we're out of time Let's almost have her sing. but I think we can yes. coax a song. Yes out, I think so. Tara. Right. She will go around. And uh, this is a song that her mother wrote. Did, did, oh my really? goodness. Mm -hmm. Now did you sing on Miss America competition? Mm -hmm. You did. Mm -hmm. Well maybe the song did it. You never know. Okay. Uh, it's called All the Days. Let's tell Tara, 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 Tara Don Christensen. God bless you. She blesses us in song. This song is based on Psalm 139, which says, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And we can rest in that peace.
to be whether joy or pain I'll trust you Don Christensen, Miss America of 1997. She gets my 10. Yes. Oh, it's a 10. The song certainly helped, but it didn't do all of it. No. Yes, yes, yes. She's gorgeous. Well, it's prayer time, dear ones, and uh, if you have a prayer need, we're on with the telephones 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Call. There'll be a prayer partner to love you and pray with you and talk to you, whatever your need may be. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, mm -hmm. I can't think of anything better to do right now than to read a testimony that came from a young man in Turkey. He said... You got a first name? Yes, so cool. he does. He is um, Nazim. 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 Wow. I'll just say Nazim said. He didn't even say, dear brother so-and-so or hello or anything. He just says, dear Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the Son of God, that you died for our sins that you were buried and rose again as it is written in the Bible. Mm. I'm sorry for the things I've done that hurt you. Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Take charge of my life. Make me the way you want me to be. With your ever-present help, I renounce all my sinful practices of the past. Cleanse my heart with your precious blood. Write my name in your book of life. I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. amen. I do believe that boy got saved. We need to that music. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to hang on to that. That blessed me. Wow. But uh, if you don't know, you, you pray that prayer along with me, and you'll know him just as this young man does and in not Turkey. Not only does he forgive us, but he heals us. There's someone that is handicapped and asking for prayer, needing financial pain in their body right now, uh, praying for a daughter's salvation, uh, just need to get some sleep, having sleep deprivation. Mm. Uh, restore relationship, healing in a body. Uh, I saw a replacement of a hip surgery facing tomorrow. Mm, uh, need a ministry and need financial help. Uh, tomorrow she'll undergo heart surgery and wants her family, TBN family, to pray with her tonight. A friend delivered, needs deliverance, husband, salvation. Um, just so many needs, honey. Yes. Um, someone lost a coat and just asking the Lord to help her find it. How yeah, sweet. Yeah. He can do that. Absolutely. Oh my. Parkinson's disease, okay. so many. Pass those on around. Y'all yeah. read them as we pray. Jan just Healing of the spine. Whispered in my ear, says, "Wouldn't it be a good idea, ask John and Tara, to host Praise the Lord once in a while? What, what do you all think? I, I think that would be a wonderful idea. <laughs> I think you got airplanes that fly into Omaha, we there, sure don't do. you? Then? We would love to. <laughs> Amen. Join hands with that neighbor of yours, will you? As we hold these in our hands, and let's just believe God for every one of these urgent needs. Father, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus, oh Lord, Your Word declares." I am the Lord that healeth thee. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Blessed be his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all 
thy diseases. Lord, that is your precious word. And we agree that these suffering ones will receive your healing touch right now in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen, amen, and amen.
This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.